I wanted to play a bit today with the cyanotype process, and it's a beautiful sunny day in North Georgia, so what, what better day to, to do that? This photosensitive exposure or development process creates this beautiful cyan blue type imprint. So let's just get started and, and um, we'll share my successes and my failures. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mix Media. I am pleased you're here. I hope you'll take a moment to subscribe and that notification bell, of course, lets you know when I upload additional content. So the cyanotypes that I have here, or not the cyanotypes, but the prepared paper has been stored in a dark plastic bag to keep it away from the sun. But I'm also going to coat some additional paper. So I'm just going to slip these gloves on. We'll be working with two chemicals, um, ferric ammonium citrate and potassium ferrocyanide. So you want to kind of slip on some gloves when you're working with chemicals. And I will put equal parts of solution A and solution B. And the link to purchase these chemicals is in my description below. Last for a year, there's a ton in these bottles. I think these bottles cost about $34 US. There are less expensive alternatives that are a smaller amount of the chemicals, and I believe they're about $15 US. So, you know, I if if you like the outcome, I would encourage you to give it a give it a try. And I linked both the thirty-four dollar one and the fifteen dollar one down below. So I'm going to do a little experimenting with layering. So I've already laid these ferns down on a piece of the photosensitive paper. I have a piece of glass down, and now I'm laying some grass strands on the second piece of glass or on the first piece of glass, and then I'm going to coat it with a second. So I'll have three pieces of glass total when I finish. So this is layer two. We'll stick that second piece of glass atop layer two. And I have some ground cover that I'm just going to drape across the bottom of this little arrangement of ferns and grass. And that shall be layer three. And then we'll clamp these together so the glass and paper are all connected, if you will. And we'll see how this works. We'll stick it out in the sun for a while. So not bad. I think that the imprint that I received from this turned out quite well. Now, I also thought I would try some masking. So I've printed this little bird image off the public domain. I'm going to cut that out, lay it on one of these uh, already prepared cyan or photosensitive pieces of paper, and put some little twigs down. I also have this lovely little silhouette of this lady. This is the one I was the most excited about, and this is my failure. So I'm making a wreath, and I'm going to stick this silhouette into the center. And I painstakingly <laughs> cut all the white, uh, you know, in the white areas with my X-Acto knife and really took some time in getting this silhouette prepared. And boy, did it turn out awful, but you'll see that in a second. But let's just get through the process. So I have all of this prepared in this wreath fashion around my silhouette. I'm going to add a little bit, and I don't know if it'll work, but I thought, you know, I'm going to stick some little talcum powder dribbles around the bottom of this or throughout that reef and see see if that keeps the sun or you know, is opaque for the sun. So let's just get it ready and we shall set it outside and let it bake in the sun for a little bit. So you can see it's already starting to turn. And this is where 
I'm just using the deck outside my my workshop. And we'll compare the solutions for rinsing. So I have just plain water in one tin. <clears throat> and then in this one here, I'll stick a little bit of peroxide. And we will dip the solution in the plain water first, then in the peroxide. And here you go. Didn't turn out at all. But we shall continue. So I'm going to try another masking. And that will be this little bird. And I'm just using some masking tape to make sure that he stays connected to the paper. I think that was part of the problem in the original one is it lifted and got exposed underneath. So we'll, we'll try this and see if this doesn't work a little better. We'll just embellish him up with a few of these little weeds and I found these weeds they're just weeds in the yard they they have to go anyway because they grow in my in my flower bed and I thought I might as well give them a purpose other than annoyance and they're kind of a lazy little flower so I like the way that they look or I, I like the way they represent themselves when they're used as the opacity for the cyanotype. So we'll get this one ready with a piece of glass. I'm just sticking it in a photo frame and I'm going to um, try a couple of other things as well. So that one is ready to go. But before we go out, I have this other little silhouette that I cut out and I'm going to tape her down and put some of my weeds <laughs> with her as well. I have a box of weeds. And I think that looks, I think that looks good. We'll see how that one turns out. This one is more opaque and I also taped her down. There are, you know, we'll see. We'll just see. I'm going to try with a stencil as well. And I'm, I'm thinking this stencil will work because of the paint on it, which will make it more opaque. So I'm kind of looking for some of my stencils that I haven't cleaned that I might be able to use over the top of another piece of this prepared paper. And I kind of cut these paper out, this paper out to use as tags. So I think that works. We'll try the, we'll try the stencil and just see if it works. Okay, so that's ready to go. We'll block that out and stick it in the sun, let it bake for a little bit, and see what happens. And I'm okay with the outcome. How about you? So now I want to take a couple of these um, cyanotypes that I had imprinted earlier in the ATC card size and just get these ready to use. So I am cutting them with a crystalline wax. I use Renaissance wax. You can use any micro crystalline wax, car wax, whatever. I'm going to ink around the outside edge of them. And I've decided that I want to add some texture. But of course, when I pulled my texture paste out, it was empty. I needed to make some more. So I'm just sticking some talcum powder in my tub, pulling out the glue. And I am just eyeballing this. <clears throat> There's, I will link a actual recipe up above and you can use that recipe but you know I thought since I had to do it I might as well bring you along for the ride and then I'm going to pour some acrylic paint in and mix it up until it is at the consistency that I think will work and then we'll test it out and and make sure that it is going to dry properly and actually work 
So let me just stir that up. And it's still a little soupy. So I think I might add some additional talc to it. And you can use cornstarch or I use baby powder. But I think cornstarch works equally as well if you don't want the exposure to the talc. And now let's just test it out and make sure that I have it. And there you go. It's working. We'll dry this up, make sure that it it stays on and, and we are good to go. So I have decided to add just a little bit of texture to these cyanotype prints for ATCs. So I'm just kind of sliding it down one side, just creating a bit more interest on the ATC cards. And I'm going to do that on each one and rotate around with with a few different stencils. And when it's done, I'll just take a very fine sandpaper and just lightly sand over the top of that to knock off anything that might be loose or just knock it down a bit. And now I am going to emboss these to give them a clear coat. So I've pulled out just the Versamark embossing stamp pad and I'm using a high gloss embossing powder and I'm putting it all over the entire piece and just using my heat tool to activate that embossing powder. And there we go. So we have a nice high gloss now over the entire piece, kind of protects that cyanotype. And we'll do that, you know, again on a few more. I'm just going to get them ready, get them sanded down, and we'll just kind of take it, take them more, more than one at a time now. So I'm inking them up using the embossing powder that I had overflowed from the, from the previous, and just scooping it in and getting them all coated. There we go. And now let's just take the heat tool to each one. And I thought I would use these for, you know, ATC training cards. And I have sent out a few. And uh, I am awaiting to hear how they arrived to make sure that they didn't crack or degrade in the shipping process. So, we, we, you know, we're kind of running a test on the embossing, but we'll, we shall see. So there you have a set of ATC cards. I think those, those will make a nice card to send out. And I will pull in some of my, what I call my catch paper, or the paper that I use when I'm cleaning my gel press or working on top of. It usually creates some interesting colors and some interesting patterns, so I save those. And this is why. It, they come in pretty handy. And I kind of keep them color coordinated in a file. And now I can pull out the ones that have a little bit of blue in them. And we'll stick that over the back and that will give us a background to put our little ATC label. It's going to ink around the outside edge. I did round off the corners. And that pretty much completes what I have done with the few cyanotypes that I've worked through. But here is kind of a sampling of, of what I like of, 
of the finished products. So I, I enjoyed this layering and I think that technique turned out pretty well. I liked the masking. This I'm going to use in an encaustic wax piece. And these I believe I will be making tags out of. So that completes this video. I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. I hope that you will subscribe. I always enjoy your comments and that thumbs up button is very beneficial to me. So if you if you have a comment for improvement, please just leave it below and uh, you know, let me know what you would like to see or or what you think would make this channel better. I appreciate it very much. Bye for now.